Well, it's a great privilege, a great privilege for me to speak to you on Good Friday morning. Thank you very much for the opportunity. We're living in a time when many are asking, will the world ever be the same again? The economic impact of the coronavirus, both nationally and globally, is undoubtedly huge. The attitude of governments around the world has been, let's do all that we need to do now and live with the consequences later. So will life ever be the same as it was before? Well, today we're thinking of a moment in history which was truly world and life changing. Things would never be the same after this day, this day we call Good or Holy Friday, the day the Son of God gave his life for the world. This is the pivotal moment of history. We only need to look at our calendars to see that Jesus is the pivotal person of history. Our calendars are divided into BC, before Christ, and AD, Anno Domini, a Latin phrase meaning in the year of the Lord, marking the year Jesus was born. And if Jesus is the pivotal person of history, then his death, though it might sound strange, is the pivotal point of his life. He was born to die. He lived to die. His death was the climax of his life. In Mark chapter 10, verse 32, we read these words. They, that's these, Jesus and his disciples, were on their way up to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way. Now, Jesus knew exactly, blow by blow, what would happen when they got to the city. He tells his disciples in the verses which immediately follow what will happen. Listen, listen to the detail here. We're going to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They'll condemn him to death, hand him over to the Gentiles. They'll mock him, spit on him, flog him, kill him. And thank God, three days later, he will rise. Now, knowing all of that, Jesus still leads the way to the city. Or as Eugene Peterson, in his paraphrase, puts it, Jesus had a head start on them. It wasn't unusual for a rabbi to walk in front of his disciples, but this is something different. Mark writes the disciples were astonished, while those who followed, that's the crowd, were afraid. I don't know whether you recall, back in John chapter 11, Jesus had said, let's go back to Judea. And rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews tried to kill you there, and you're going to go back there? But there was something in the demeanour of Jesus which caused this reaction from the disciples and the crowd. He is setting his face, as Dr Luke puts it, to go to Jerusalem. And on this Good Friday morning, we need to simply realise that the motive for this action was obedience to his Father and love for you. You were in the mind of our Saviour as he led the way to his impending suffering and death. And I pray that you will find the time today to meditate on this, to bask in the warmth of his love and to respond with gratitude and praise, realising that the world will never be the same after this day. And one reason it can never be the same is that now every human being has a choice to make. Jesus has poured out his love and his life. Are we, by faith, going to receive the free gift of that love and life? Or are we going to neglect or even reject it? Good Friday, a world-changing, life-changing day of love.